Chapter 3 Tucker Jackson? Tucker lifted his head at the sound of his name. The guard, a lithe man with a shaved head and more than a few tattoos, who went by the name Mike, stood at the door of the jail cell. He looked much fiercer than he turned out to be. He'd checked on Tucker every half hour for the first few hours, but Tucker would still be glad when he was released and able to return home. Sitting in a holding cell with three other men, one who reeked of alcohol and snored louder than a freight train, was not his idea of a good way to spend the night. Thankfully, the other two men hadn't seemed to know who he was and had left him alone. Even better, the man from the bar had been placed in a different holding cell, but Tucker was still very relieved to hear his name. He stood, stretching his stiff legs and crossed to the open door. Thanks, Mike. My dad finally show up? Tucker hadn't wanted to get his father involved, but better him than anyone on the team. So he'd used his one call to phone his father. Perhaps with his money, he could make the whole thing go away before anyone found out. He'd been working, of course, but had promised to do what he could. The guard dodged his stare and shifted from one foot to the other. Something like that. He blinked, and Tucker noticed the back of his eyelids were tattooed as well. He couldn't imagine how painful that had been. And he wondered if Mike was just a sadist, or if he had been using the pain from the needle to cover up some larger pain in his life. Mike locked the cell door after letting Tucker out, and then led the way out to the processing area. However, as the door opened and Tucker caught a glimpse of the figure waiting for him, his heart sank. It was not the stocky figure of his father, but the lean physique of Blaine Hollis waiting for him. How in the world had Blaine found out? And why was he here? Tucker gathered his personal items, taking an extra moment to compose himself as he shoved his keys and wallet in his pocket before turning to face Blaine. He all set? Blaine asked Mike as if Tucker wasn't standing right next to him. Mike glanced quickly at Tucker before dropping his gaze back to the counter. Yes, sir. He's good to go. Good. Let's go, Jackson. Blaine headed for the exit without giving Tucker a chance to say anything. Tucker's stubborn streak wanted to refuse, to demand to know where his father was and why Blaine was here but he could tell from the stiff set of the quarterback's shoulders that this was not the time nor the place. What could he say anyway? The tense silence filled the space between them, like some invisible third party as Tucker followed Blaine to his Ford Mustang. Red, yellow, and orange streaked the sky in a beautiful artistic pattern as the sun rose. But Tucker couldn't enjoy it. He was too worried about his future. Blaine unlocked the doors and motioned Tucker into the passenger seat, but he said nothing until they were both inside and the doors were closed. What were you thinking, Jackson? Blaine's voice was low, but Tucker did not miss the anger that threaded it. This isn't what I meant when I told you to think about your job. I wasn't trying to start the fight, Blaine. Tucker hated that he was having to defend himself to Blaine of all people. I was trying to enjoy one beer. One. But then the man poked me and spouted off about my sister. So I got up to leave. He tackled me from behind, man. What was I supposed to do? You're supposed to keep your cool, Blaine said in a tight voice. We are in the public eye, Jackson, so everything we do is scrutinized. On top of that, our record isn't where our fans or the owners would like it to be. You may not like it or agree with it, but that puts added pressure on us. We can't afford any negative publicity right now. Not that it matters, but what was the fight about? Tucker shrugged, knowing his explanation changed nothing. Guy was drunk, and evidently he bet a grand we would win the game yesterday. Needless to say, he wasn't too happy when we lost. Blaine's sigh shook his broad shoulders, and he gazed out the windshield as if trying to think of what to say. Tucker took the opportunity to ask the question burning in his throat. Why are you here, Blaine? I called my father, not anyone from the team. For just a moment, Blaine's jaw tightened, the muscles rippling beneath his skin. Your father was buried in a case, Jackson. He couldn't make it, so he called Coach, and Coach called me. Disappointment blanketed Tucker's shoulders. His dad couldn't even find time to help out his son when he was in jail? He shouldn't be surprised. He couldn't remember the last time his father had been there when he needed him. So what's the verdict? Am I suspended? No, not suspended. Your father may not have been able to be here, but he is still influential. 
Your charge was only going to be disorderly conduct anyway, but he got it dropped completely, so you wouldn't face suspension. However, you will have a hefty fine to pay, and we're going to have to find some way to improve your image, in case this gets out. Some sort of community service. Community service? Tucker exploded. I was defending myself. Blaine shot him a silencing look. Community service is not negotiable. You have a chip on your shoulder, Jackson. It's affecting your gameplay. And now it's affecting the whole team. I don't know what your story is, but I think it's time you took a look at how the less fortunate live. Maybe that will give you some perspective. Perspective. Blaine knew nothing about perspective. His father was probably in his life, and he probably attended every game Blaine had ever played. Tucker clenched his jaw to keep from saying the words rising in his throat. It would do no good to argue with Blaine right now. What kind of community service, and for how long? I'm not sure yet. Coach and the public relations guy are going to look at some options. The judge didn't officially assign any, so that means they don't have to align it with the incident at the bar. This is more a requirement from the team. I'm sure it'll be low-key, but I would keep your evenings free, at least for the foreseeable future. What about practice? What about the next game? This couldn't be happening. He hadn't started the fight. He'd tried to leave. Yes, he might have punched the guy one too many times, but he was only defending himself. Who could blame him? You'll still attend every practice and every game. The service will be done in your off time, and if you don't fulfill the time, then you will be suspended without pay for the remainder of the season. Should we happen to lose before the championship game, you will fulfill that suspension at the beginning of next season. Am I clear? Crystal, Tucker said as he slumped against the seat. He should be grateful. It was better than being suspended, but giving up his evenings to do charity work was certainly not how he had planned to fill his time. Shelby stared at the phone as she thought of what to say. How could she persuade the football team to send one of the players to help her out? She had nothing to offer in return besides the good karmic feelings of helping others out. You can't make the sell if you don't at least try, Kinsey said from behind her. I know, but what if they say no? Our usual donors have been so quiet this year. What if it stays like this? What if people are too busy or too focused on themselves to care about others? What if we're seeing the end of charitable donations? Kenzie's right eyebrow lifted as she chuckled. Wow, doomsday much? Seriously, you were made for this. Call them, tell them the amazing things you do, and ask them for a player to hold a clinic, or a signing, or whatever. I bet you'll be surprised by humanity's response. I don't think we've completely fallen into the abyss yet. You're right, Shelby said with a shake of her head. She wasn't usually this dramatic, but it had just seemed the last few months that people cared less about the other people around them and more about their electronics. She'd seen more and more people scrolling their phones as they walked or during meals while others sat across from them. And their last fundraiser, a car wash in the summer, had been an absolute flop. People had said they were too busy to stop or that they'd come by later. Except they never had. The kids had been so disappointed. Shelby just didn't want to have to disappoint them again. She took a deep breath and picked up the phone. She'd Googled the information for the team when she'd first arrived at the center and had found the public relation manager's number. As her finger pressed the buttons, she sent up a silent prayer for the right words to say. The phone rang once, twice, three times in her ear. Disappointment pressed down on her shoulders. But just as she was about to hang up the phone, a voice answered, Hello? This is Blaine Hollis. How can I help you? Blaine Hollis? She didn't think that was the name she'd seen on the website. Had she dialed the wrong number? Her fingers hadn't been shaking that badly, had they? Oh, hello. I thought I was about to get a voicemail. Shelby's words spilled out in a frantic ramble. She took a calming breath and tried again. My name is Shelby Dahl. I'm the director of the South Lake Community Center. Perhaps you know that we serve the community as a low-cost alternative for after-school and summer care for children? Ugh, she sounded like a bad saleswoman. The kind who didn't know what to say and therefore just rattled off all the details. I'm calling because we're looking for donations to keep our doors open. I don't know if your organization does this sort of thing, 
but I wondered if there might be any players on your team who would be willing to host a clinic that we could charge for, or an autograph signing or something? Shelby shook her head as she paused. She really should have scripted her speech better, practiced it on Kenzie or something. You want a football player to come and host a clinic at the community center? The man on the other end said the word slowly and thoughtfully, but Shelby wasn't sure if he was mocking her or just chewing the idea over. Yes, sir. It would be great community service, and I imagine it would be a great outreach for the team as well. Meet the community, sign some autographs. I'm sure your fans would eat it up. Finally, she sounded like someone who knew what she was talking about. She waited as the silence drew out. What was he thinking? What did you say your name was again? Shelby. Shelby Dahl. Well, Shelby, I think I know of just the player for you. She could hear the smile in his voice and her heart sped up. Could she really be about to get her miracle? You do? I do. His name is Tucker Jackson. I'll send him over this afternoon and you can work out the details. Shelby felt like jumping from her chair and dancing around the room. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, thank you, Shelby. She found his wording odd as she hung up the phone. Why did he sound as if she had just given him the miracle instead of the other way around? They have someone? Kinsey asked. She had been so quiet that Shelby had forgotten she was still in the room. Yeah, uh, Tucker Jackson. Kenzie's eyes grew to the size of quarters as her head dropped forward, sending her brown hair swishing across her thin shoulders. Tucker Jackson? The running back? Uh, maybe? Shelby wasn't even sure what a running back was, much less if Tucker Jackson was one. I didn't ask. The guy said Mr. Jackson will be here this afternoon. Oh my gosh, this is huge. Can I take a slightly longer lunch to go home and change? Change? Shelby's eyes roamed over Kenzie's outfit. Tight, stretchy pants that accentuated her figure and a flowy blouse was her outfit of choice today. Not exactly what Shelby would classify as professional attire, but Kenzie generally worked with the kids where her full outfit was rarely seen by parents and no one had complained yet. Why? You look fine. Yes, but fine is what you wear when the cute UPS guy is stopping by with a package. It is not what you wear when Tucker Jackson, star running back for the Texas Tornadoes, is stopping by. Kenzie flashed her best puppy dog face and clasped her hands together under her chin. Please? Fine. Shelby rolled her eyes. She certainly hoped Kinsey didn't lose herself over this guy. It wouldn't be the first time, but she needed her friend's head in the game if they were going to save the center.